Welcome to segment 10 of the DM's commentary. So you have several options. You can either investigate this area or clear it out, or you can go through the doors and then figure out where to go from there. Um, I'm up for where we are. I think we could bring doors. that thing with us. Go through the doors. We, we know what's down there. Yeah. Who knows what treasure you might be missing room. down over here? <laughs> 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 These look really hard wow. to penetrate, those wow. doors. Well, can the um, missile, whatever the hell it's called, the, the dragon of, of wheels, yep. make that turn? Because it seems like one of the squares is cracked away. Uh, you, not sure. Hmm. What seems cracked away? Yes. Uh, the hallway. Right. Oh, yes. We are opening this episode with a token DM ass shot. What I like to call a blue moon. I probably won't say a lot during this segment because, frankly, this segment has a lot of hilarious lines from the players. I mean, should we... Should we just tear through here and try to get some treasure? The decision point here is, do we scrounge for treasure, or do we press on? Right, three to two? Unless. Clearly you are not on board. Very well. Although I will say, if we can't get that cool uh, flamethrower thing through the hallway, we should go back and use it in the other room. That's, that's my caveat. All right, I'm with you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm here to okay. serve the party. So you want to turn your construct thing around and take it with you? Or leave it where it is? I'll take it with. Okay. All right. They choose to press on. And they're faced with another choice right away. Do they descend into a rough-hewn cavern? Or do they follow the masonry passage? Uh, you see that it's cold here. There's some icicles hanging <laughs> off the roof of the cavern here. Uh, this hallway is adorned with... When I was describing the two options, I kind of had it in mind not to make any one of those options any more intimidating or threatening than the other, because I wanted to make it as genuine a choice for the players as possible. Hanging in the marble hallway, you would be down in the grotto. There are two very different types of options, though. It isn't simply a case of, you know, take the left passage or the right passage. One is clearly very different in feel than the other one. Their um, coffers or something? I didn't get that part. <laughs> <laughs> My if, if there was a briefing. Well. <laughs> it makes it a much more interesting decision point than normal. Because the players are undoubtedly thinking, okay, if we go down the cavern way, what likely things are we going to encounter down there? Versus if we take the you know beautiful masonry hallway with the carved pr processionals on the walls, what we're likely to face down there. They should know that they're screwed in either case, but they're new. Except for Dan and Doug. And Doug, you can tell, you can look at Doug's face and he's like, oh yeah, it doesn't matter which way we go, guys. We're going to be screwed either way. I'll follow you in uh, You know from the dwarven face a little bit about this area, and you do know that there was a hall, some sort of regal hall there. That's about all it was able to tell you. As for staircases and stuff, you just don't know. Mm. The regal hall, like maybe a tomb hall? And if you look on Dan's face, it's really hard to read, but you can tell he's thinking, I don't care which way we go, as long as there are no more fucking drums. Yes, there's a new piece of paper. Right. Often, yes. Places lead places. Yeah. Do we get action points back because we healed? Uh, you don't. If you spent them, you don't have them until you go through another encounter. encounter. If you still have yours, of course, you can so spend it. So at the start of another encounter or the start of the second? Here we talk about action point recovery, and uh, I tell, without using the term milestone, I basically tell them that they get their action points back at the end of every other encounter. We, we think or we know if she was buried with its owner. Uh, she, uh, Trillian, told you that it, is, it was entombed with its uh, owner. Well, you know what? I, since uh, Bluebell was yep. the one who was MVP for opening the doors, mm. more, better than anyone else could have done. I say we follow Bluebell's lead. All right, All right. Bluebell will make the final call, but let's say, <laughs> show of hands, who wants to go to the, uh, the ornate All right, now, this is how a player group should function. <laughs> Everybody gets a say in which direction the party goes. Do want to find these shields, or...? I found that players who try to dominate the game and either consciously or unconsciously prevent right. other players from contributing to the, de the, the decision-making process and they're not the most fun. To go down. <laughs> okay. All to right. the grotto. All right. Into <laughs> right. the grotto. Uh, as you see on the map, there are these little. Of course, as soon as they commit to this decision, <laughs> you know very shortly they're going to regret their choice, and somebody's going to have to take the heat for it. When you get there, 
you don't see much. The grotto is a little bit icy, but not nearly as treacherous as the room you left. You don't have to make checks or anything like that. Mm. Uh, and climbing down doesn't seem particularly difficult. Mm -hmm. Might be a little bit more difficult climbing up. What's Zeb has a moment coming up, which is so hilarious, I could barely control myself. I have great effort. In fact, I'm pretty sure that one of the puddles under my chair wasn't from the water leaking in from the rain, but was probably from a moment coming up in this segment. So you're basically relying on your torches. <laughs> All right, well, we got a flamethrower. Should the flamethrower go first and just clear stuff out? Well, that's the thing about your flamethrower. You're not convinced it can descend too well. Should we leave it up here watching our back? Sort of like pushing it. It's on off. wheels. We can leave it on the fence behind us. I can't, I don't think I can, can tensors floating disc support it? I don't think so. No. no. Here's the thing. Too what small. What is it gonna do is really leaving it behind. None. How is it gonna protect <laughs> us behind? But if we all push it, we can get it down there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like how you guys are stepping on our wizard's toes when he's the one <laughs> that spent five turns freeing this son of a bitch. And you guys want to literally tumble it down <laughs> these five foot, <laughs> these five foot cliffs <laughs> because there's no point in leaving him behind. That's my understanding that they're not what steps. It only, take. it only represents a decline. They are in fact steps. <laughs> <laughs> Far be it for me to tell Tom that he's wrong. This wasn't meant to be a big deal, really. Do any of us have any sort of... You know, does the party go left or right? They were probably overthinking this a bit. But the DM's job is sometimes to fall silent and let the players interact. <laughs> listen, listen. I'm, I'm not doing manual labor other than getting... We got along just fine without the flamethrower. Can we use rope to tie off the back and lower it down uh, a step at a time? You think so. It's, it's time consuming, but not particularly you know what, arduous. So it takes some effort, but we could lower it down. Let's go down first. If we find we need it, we maybe can come so back. Leave it up here, then like pointing outward. It's like going into war. You've and got an awesome tank. tank but eh. We'll leave it to the <laughs> we, we, we need to lower it by rope or leave it when or we, go in. Or do we just want to go in the hallway? What if the so we can we get to the end of this DM hallway. tip number six don't get in the way of a good player exchange. <laughs> Just let the fun happen. How much landscaping we did just so this flamethrower <laughs> could follow us into the grotto. And I, I hope you well, guys are proud of yourselves. This. Do we still want to go to the grotto? Since we, since this can... <laughs> so we're, doing, we're basing our entire strategy on this semi-sentient flamethrower. When, well, when did he become maybe, the most important maybe, member of our team? Maybe they should elect the ballista party leader. Tomb in a, in, a, in a very marble, nice. For one thing, don't bad mouth that flamethrower. <laughs> I like that member of the team better than I like you. He's way more useful. That's what I'm all you do, is, all you do is walk three squares and trip and fall. I ask it of its of its abilities and and where it came from. I burn things. And where I burn things. Previous to me. Torak Iron Mantle. All right, now that, Torak Iron Mantle, that is a name I had to come up with on the fly because I was not prepared for Dan's question. So I plucked a name out of the ether that sounded appropriately dwarven. He's like the face. Does he know where Torak is laid to rest? He is not laid here. This is the One of the best DM tools I ever created for myself, and I still use to this day, is this gigantic list of names. And I did not actually bring it with me to this session, um, which was probably poor planning on my part. But I use it for my home games. Basically, I've got this page of dwarven names, first and last, you know, dragonborn names, human names, elf names, halfling names. And I separate the first names from the last names so that I can match them up differently. And I keep these long lists handy uh, for my campaigns when I meet incidental NPCs that I hadn't uh, pre-planned on them encountering. <laughs> hugely, hugely useful. I should really post that somewhere. Maybe I'll post that up on my community blog on the community.wizards.com site. I think a lot of people would find that very helpful. Also save DMs a pile of time. Activate it once for fun, just down the hall. Burn the hall. Yeah. Done.